What I described as a personal process was something that was common to many in the Israeli left. In fact, it led to a complete collapse of the Israeli left. Because the Israeli left, where I grew up, believed for a very long time that, as I said, the day that the Palestinians will have a chance to have a state in the West Bank and Gaza is the day we have peace. And the left saw its leaders, and most notably initially Rabin and then Barak, go and try to implement this idea. And Barak went all out. And Olmert then in 2006 to 2008 went even more all out, if it was even possible. And yet, as I said, there was nowhere the word yes. Now you can make explanations and excuses and you can say, it's not really this, it's not really that. But ultimately, a people who wants a state says yes. One of my favorite quotes that was introduced to me in those years of thinking was a quote by, of all people, Ernst Bevan. Ernst Bevan, the British foreign minister after World War II, as I'm sure you know, was no friend to the Jewish people and no friend to Zionism. And yet he goes to the British Parliament in February of 1947 to explain to the people of Britain why Britain is reneging on its mandate, why Britain is taking the mandate it received from the League of Nations and giving it back to the heir of the League of Nations, the United Nations. And he says the following, he says, His Majesty's government has come to the conclusion that there is an irreconcilable conflict of interest in the land. Irreconcilable conflict. Why? And he explains, he says, for the Jews in the land, the essential point of principle is the establishment of a sovereign state. So the Jewish people want a state. For the Arabs in the land, he says, the essential point of principle is to prevent to the last the establishment of Jewish sovereignty anywhere in the land. Now it's a fascinating analysis of the conflict and why it's irreconcilable. He says the Jews want a state, they want sovereignty. Of course they want as much of it as they can, but they'll take whatever they can get. And the Arabs want the Jews not to have their state. In many ways, this has been the best analysis and the best predictor of the conflict ever since. It explains why during partition, the Jews said yes and the Arabs said no. It's easy to kind of paint the Arabs as just blind rejectionists. The Jews said yes, they were not happy they're getting half of what they were promised, but they said yes. Because they wanted a state, they wanted sovereignty. So in our history, a people who want a state say yes. The Arabs believed that one half for the Jewish people was one half too much. The Jewish people were crusaders, foreigners, interlopers who had no business being there. So they said no. And I think what we've realized, even though this is a speech from 1947, is that the essence of the conflict has not changed. And to date, whenever the Arab Palestinians had a chance to have a state, there was always a price tag. And the price was that the Jewish state will also remain. The price of having an Arab-Palestinian state, since 1937 even, was the acceptance that the Jewish state has a right to live next to them, to be there, to be permanent, and that they have to accept it for all and forever and for good. No dreams of return, no dreams of rolling back Zionism 150 years. And at least to date, this has been too high a price for them to pay. This is why I hate the fact that so many people, especially in Europe, treat the Palestinians as mindless victims who don't know what they're doing. They have made choices that come from their own sense of history, from their own sense of justice. 
Have you ever heard about this movement very popular on campuses called Justice for Palestine? Justice for Palestine sounds like a wonderful cause. If you're a young person on campus who wants to do good in the word, world, you want to be for justice in Palestine. I want justice for Palestine. Until you realize that the injustice that needs to be corrected is the very existence of the state of Israel. Only once that disappears can there be justice for Palestine. That's not a very peaceful idea. So, but from their perspective, even today, this is justice. This is what they believe is their due. Only when these foreigners and crusaders and interlopers will go away. And as I said, it takes time for the other side to accept that we are not colonialists. That when the Jewish people came here, in their mind they came home. They didn't take a foreign land. They didn't come to a strange land. So I think a lot of people on the left collapsed because they had to contend with how deep the conflict is and that it will take time and that there are no easy solutions. I love the fact that so many people are saying, well, there's the one state solution, there's the two state solution. There's... And I tell them, you know what? Leave one state or two state. The word solution is the word that is losing resonance. The notion that you can solve something that is so deep and difficult, and it has a simple solution that you can tie up nicely in the bow. And I think the left is still struggling with this notion of what are they going to offer if they can no longer offer a solution of peace. And I think this is something that the left still is trying to come out of and, and something that I think it has to deal with. It has to deal with the question that the conflict is far deeper and far more serious than what we were led to believe for during the 70s and 80s and 90s. Yes.